Fujifilm has been making an impact on the camera industry by delivering retro-looking camera bodies with amazing sensors on board. And now, they've got that same approach, but in a smaller package. Let's have a look at the Fuji X-M1. Hello again, I'm Larry Becker and I've got Fuji's latest offering, the X-M1. Fuji has received some well-deserved recognition lately for their X-Pro1 and X-E1 because they have some really impressive sensor technology in a package that looks like a traditional rangefinder body, but one that has the great features of the digital age. This new X-M1 shares a lot of that same DNA, but in a smaller package with classic looks similar to a rangefinder style but with a smaller price tag. If you're not familiar with the sensor in these cameras, it's a 16.3 megapixel APS-C CMOS X-Trans sensor, with the pixels arranged in such a way as to minimize or eliminate more, while also eliminating the need for an optical low-pass filter. What that means is some of the sharpest possible images from a sensor this size. The X-M1 has a magnesium alloy body and similar styling cues to the popular Fujifilm cameras up the product line, but this one is noticeably smaller. I personally prefer the larger form factor, but lots of folks will love the smaller size, and there's definitely a quality feel to the body and the controls as well. While we're talking about the form factor, the X-M1 has a tilting 920,000 dot LCD, which is really nice for shooting stills and video at unusual angles. You can also use it to try and minimize glare when you're outside in very bright shooting conditions. That's because the X-M1 is missing the viewfinder that the other Fujis have. I'm a viewfinder fan myself, and outdoor shooting with just an LCD is usually a little frustrating for me, so I have a Hoodman loop that I attach to any camera I'm using that's equipped with just an LCD. The kit that I tested came with a nice 16 to 50 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 OIS lens. That's a 35 millimeter equivalent focal length range of 24 to 75 millimeters. The OIS designation means that it has optical image stabilization built in. Keep in mind though, there's no OIS switch on the lens body, so it's controlled with menu settings. There are four position options for optical image stabilization based on whether it's always on or just when you press the shutter part way. As well, there's an optional motion component that affects the shutter speed as a component of image stabilization. Now, in my experience, the number two position without the motion option gave me the best results, but you may want to try and play around with it a little bit because the other options may work better for you. Speaking of improving low light photos, the camera has both a hot shoe for an optional add-on flash from Fuji or another maker and a built-in pop-up flash. I love this kind of pop-up flash because you can manually point the flash to bounce off the ceiling so it's a built-in flash that doesn't have to give you that harsh, direct flash. The X-M1 has all the pro shooting modes like programmed auto, shutter priority, aperture priority, and manual, as well as a user-defined mode labeled C. There are several other mode dial positions, and while the icons aren't very intuitive to me, novices will appreciate how many ways the various automated settings can help capture better images. There's SR Plus, which is a scene mode where the camera picks settings that it thinks are the best for the situation. The icon that looks like a camera is full auto, and it works like a point and shoot. The ADV position allows you to apply special effects to images in camera as you shoot, like toy camera, simulated miniature, and so on. SP is a mode that allows you to tell the camera about the kind of scene that you're shooting and it adjusts settings accordingly and the next three icons are just the three most popular scene modes so that you can set them manually with the mode dial rather than going to the SP mode and picking with on-screen controls. The spec sheet tells you that this camera's focus system is just contrast detection autofocus with no phase detection autofocus points. But don't worry about it being slow because it's not. 
I was really pleased with how quick the focus was in both bright and low light. The only thing I was a little disappointed with was focus on moving objects that were fairly close to me, and I'll give you a specific example. My friend Brad was walking into the office and I was standing still, photographing him as he approached me. Then he stopped for just a second to do something on his phone and I snapped another shot. Now if this was just about any other digital camera two or three years ago, looking at the images of Brad walking, I'd have been just fine with them. They weren't really blurry, just a little soft in some areas. But only when you compare those to the images of Brad standing still, that's when you realize that the still image emphasizes the detail in the fabric of his shirt. I was amazed just how sharp and detailed those images were. Granted, this camera is rated at 5.6 frames a second and the focus system is fast, so people may be shooting various kinds of action with some success. But I'm thinking that the XM1 is more of a general purpose camera and it should serve folks well in that way. The video is general purpose too. It does 1080p HD video capture with stereo sound, but there's no mic jack for external audio sources. So I wouldn't think many enthusiast videographers would be using the XM1s for their productions. The XM1 has a consumer-oriented Wi-Fi function that allows you to transfer images from the camera to a mobile device, like a phone or an iPad, but it doesn't act as a remote control for the camera like some Wi-Fi setups allow. Just image review and image transfer. I was able to move images from the camera to my iPad rather quickly, and while the manual says that you can connect to an existing network, I was able to set up the camera and iPad in an ad hoc network fashion, so the transfer didn't rely on an existing Wi-Fi network. One note here, the connection and transfer worked as advertised, but it didn't maintain that connection for long after I did the initial transfer. So you probably need to re-establish the connection each time that you want to transfer one or more images, as opposed to shooting and transferring on the fly. There are a couple of design elements I think are a little unexpected. First, you should know that the tripod mount is off-center from the lens and very close to the battery door. And since the memory card slot is inside that same door, you have to remove your quick release plate or a threaded strap mount to get to the memory card. That seems a little inconvenient. The other strange thing is that the silent mode should really be called the slightly more subtle mode because it turns off the flash and the beep, but the shutter noise is identical. There's no shutter noise dampening at all. I know quite a few pro photographers who have an allegiance to one of the big DSLR companies, but who use an X-Pro1 or XE1 as they're walking around non-commercial camera because they love the nostalgic styling cues and all the modern features as well as the impressive image quality. Now, with the smaller form factor of the XM1, I'd be willing to bet that Fuji builds that fan base even more. For b and and Kelby Training, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training. We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography. From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year, or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, seven day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.